bruh. Dude, scoot it. Scoot it up, bro. You guys want to hit the scooter part? We're scooting all the way to hell. Dude, school's out. Sun's out. Time to get the scoots out. Dude. Game, game scooter time. Scooter time. Let's go cut up with our razor. <laughs> Rip a tail whip on your time, dog. Dude. Son, did you see this? Razor scooter freestyle for five thousand dollars from Walmart. Yeah. No, I didn't see that. I, I that's, thought, oh my god, that's a rare copy of the Dreamcast <laughs> version for five thousand dollars from Walmart. Like, what? wow, I want to click on this. Uh, yeah, it's the Pixel Report. It's a show about old video games. Every week we play an old video game and then we talk about it here on the Pixel Report. And uh, I'm your host, John Shoneman, coming at you live from UW Milwaukee. Di- uh, digital audio studio it's digital we're coming to you digital smells like computations in here <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh alec is here too alec griefy it's great to be back Ooh, with you boys good to have you thank you <laughs> good to have you alec thanks thanks john aiden it's here aiden keys hey john <laughs> can't wait to uh get the day going today hey little buddy thanks for coming to the show today yeah i just woke up a couple minutes ago i'm ready to uh do the show and then go out to my night shift at the graveyard. <laughs> cool. I'm excited for you to do that tonight. Uh, Eric Kirsting is here. Yo, that's me. Hey, Eric. Mm. Everybody, everybody's feeling good. Feeling hot. Feeling fresh. Yeah, it's kind of hot in here. Yeah, I'm freaking steaming up over I took here. I'm like a dumpling. <laughs> I'm a wet dumpling. I took one of my shirts off. I'm a fried dumpling. Only time will tell if I remove my other this other shirt. You can't do that on Twitch. They'll ban you. Oh, we're not on Twitch. We're on, we're on Facebook. Facebook. Anything, Live! anything goes on Facebook. You can do yeah. whatever you want. I can burn a bag of cat fur. Also, n- nobody on the stream can actually see us. So, I can see you, and I'm on the stream. If you're uh, shirtless through audio, is that a... You can tell. That's a Is that an aggression? You can definitely tell over the air if someone's got a shirt on or not. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we played a game Uh, about scooters. So, does Eric, do you have a warm up question about scooters? Yeah. Is it about scooters or something else? It's kind of about scooters. Kind of. Well, what is it? Um, What was your favorite uh, wheeled transportation growing up? Bird. Bird scooters. Bird. Bird. Uh, you didn't have a no, bird scooter didn't. growing up. No, bird I'd scooters bike. are also illegal. Yes, in the, in the city of Milwaukee, none of us would them. ever have a bird scooter, nor would we steal them and keep them in our basement. No, I never stole any. I biked when I was a kid. Skateboarded some. I like. But, no, I, I want like <laughs> I want the physical artifact. Like I don't want just like I like the scooter. I want you to tell me about that scooter. I want you to tell me about your. Board. I, have good, I have some good scooter stories. I was telling my parents these stories today. Because they were asking about what game we played this week, and I was saying a scooter game, and I had one of those Razor scooters growing up, and the wheel had like the back, you know, they have plastic wheels. The back wheel had like a divot on it where part of the wheel was flat, mm-hmm. so it just like rattled all over the place because the wheels weren't round. And uh, there was like this hill d- that went down to my house, and it would ride it down that hill, pretty big hill, ride it down with two people on it. Alec remembers. Yeah. <laughs> I remember all the scooters at your house now. <laughs> yeah, dude, I had some scooters, doing scooter tricks, doing jumps, taking off ramps. It's pretty fun. Yeah, pretty dangerous. Uh, yeah. so that's my, that's what I did. Didn't you? Uh, I thought you were gonna tell the story when you swung the golf club at me when I was <laughs> on the scooter at your house. Were you on a scooter? I thought you were just running. Oh, I thought I was on the scooter. <laughs> I don't know. I hit Alex with a golf club. <laughs> <laughs> He's just hanging out in the yard <laughs> with golf clubs. Alec, what about you? What's your favorite wheeled transportation growing up? Mm, my dad had a four-wheeler, and I'd drive that around. Oh, those things are dangerous. ATV. It was fun. We'd uh, My cousin would sit on the back, and I'd drive him around, and he'd have a net, and then we'd drive through the field across the street, and we would s- try and catch grasshoppers on the go, like drive-by catching the grasshoppers. <laughs> 
That was yeah, fun. That's, 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 how what we, they, that's what ATVs were made for. Mm-hmm. That's how we did it in Merrill. <laughs> Drive-by grasshopper catching. <laughs> you better watch out. That's all we had. <laughs> Aiden, you like bikes? Yeah, I used to bike uh, <laughs> a bike over my friend's house on the other side of town. So lame. Once we invited someone over and they came over and they got mad and they left because we were playing Halo. And then we chased them on our bikes and they went into the sewers to get away from <laughs> us. <laughs> That's pretty rad. Did they ever come back out? No. I look down there sometimes. It's just yellow eyes. <laughs> What's the it guy? Uh, Mr. Clown, the Pennywise. Oh, yeah, Pennywise. Um, for me, growing up, uh, uh, so I l- probably my favorite one was my Razor scooter. I had a black Razor scooter. I'd drive it to the gas station and pick up candy, um, which I would buy with like finding quarters hanging out around the house, like in between cushions and stuff. That sounds good. And then, but this is a funny story. I got a bike for like my seventh birthday or sixth birthday or something like that. And like they're like, oh, go go ride it, Eric. And my birthday is like in like October, so it's like the leaves were already falling and stuff. And I got on the bike and I kind of started riding it. And I was just like looking at my feet pedaling, and I ran into a tree. It was like the first time I was ever on a bike. I just ran directly into a tree. And that's, that's my life. <laughs> that's sad. I actually do like riding bikes though. And you know, honestly, I wish I had a scooter. Scooters are cool, man. Yeah. They're not. We'll talk about this game. Anybody skateboard? Any skateboarders? Aiden did. I skateboarded. skateboarded. But I'm fat. My little brother broke <laughs> multiple I, I bones only, skateboarding. Like, ollie. I couldn't. I can't even ollie. I tried doing an ollie, and I, I really hurt myself. I just fall off the board if I just just was standing on it. I can't. Yeah, it's skateboarding's hard. The last time I skateboarded was in college. Like I used to do it when I was a kid, but then I did it in college, and I tried going down to, like a vert ramp. Oh, yeah. Fell right on my elbow. Oh, no. Ripped open my skin through two layers of shirts. <laughs> oh, God. Ouch. Boarding is dangerous. Scooting, Ooh, scooting is dangerous. Scooting is safe. Extreme Being freestyle. outside, just doing anything outside. Yeah. Is you got to stay That's inside. why you stay yeah. inside and play Razor Freestyle Scooter. Ooh, that's the game we played, Razor Freestyle Scooter. Alec picked bam, it. Bam, bam. Thanks, Al. You're welcome. And, you know, Alec was saying, uh, you know, we've been just getting a lot of stinkers lately. So he <laughs> goes over and picks a... <laughs> Picks a licensed scooter game for the N64. <laughs> Black a blockbuster exclusive. exclusive. <laughs> I just saw it was a scooter game, and I'm like, wow, I've never played a scooter game before. <laughs> so <laughs> That's exactly what an eight-year-old would have thought in Blockbuster <laughs> at seeing this game in 1998. Oh, I've never played a scooter game. And then they, they make their mom rent it for them. Scooters are pretty lame as far as extreme <laughs> sports go. <laughs> I knew someone in high school that did, like, Scooter tricks at the skate park. Wow. But oh, the cover so bad you for get, your ankles. You get beat up for doing that. <laughs> you know what's extreme, though, is the cover for Razor Freestyle Scooter, which yeah. depicts a child flying through the clouds on a Razor Scooter. I think the cover, he's a real, like, he was a famous sportster. Oh, and really? He, yeah, he was, like, an actual scooter but guy. But they, they didn't get his actual name for the video game. What do you mean, was? <laughs> they thought he's probably he dead now, yeah. From scoot. Scooted to death. <laughs> he fell off, like, one of the bonus stages. <laughs> Scooted right off getting the face the, of the earth. Bonus. Yeah, getting the Razor license had a little more clout than getting this kid's name on the on the That's box, true. right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, well, Al, why don't you tell us a little bit about Razor Freestyle yeah, Scooter. Razor Let's Freestyle get Scooter, uh, published by Crave Entertainment and also Ubisoft. Um, developed by Shaba Games, and they did a few other, like... These board and games, what here. these sports games. They did the s- one that we played was Titanium Studios. I don't know. I don't know what That's you're talking what about. That's what it says on Wikipedia. It says, Shaba Games Her- developed the game GBC and GBA versions, and Titanium Studios did the T- DC and N64 versions. Sorry, I, I don't mean to step on your thunder. I, I don't go. care. Titanium, what do they do? I don't know. They, they don't, they don't have, have a page. page. Uh, I'm looking them up on Google. This says Crawfish did the Game Boy versions, so I don't even know what Shaba Games. I think Sh- yeah. I think all <laughs> these. I think Shaba Games worked on this game. Shaba Games. Ooh, Titanium Studios has a website. Um, what about the uh, the Crave? They did some. They published some stuff that we played, didn't they? they published a lot of a lot of crap. Let's yeah. See. I'm, I'm looking. I'm going to the. None of this is very important because this game is kind of just oh, a blank yeah. in in time. 
Yeah, oh, Crave time. has done like a billion games. So. Yeah, but of uh, the ones we've even played this year, Evergrace is on there. Oh, okay. As, Jade, Jade Cocoon 2. Yeah, we played that last year. We played that. That's a game. Uh, there was one more I saw that was like purple when I was scrolling through. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you just publish as many games as you can and eventually... One stick. You'll, you'll, turn, you'll make a few bucks. Cast a wide net, you'll catch a few sardines. That's, yeah, that's a famous parable, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> Jesus said that. I believe so. Uh, what year did this come out, did you say? Oh, I don't even know. I didn't, I didn't December... No, wait. N64. Oh, November 2001. Yeah. That's late. Yeah, it's late. That's late in the N64. Wait, was that? That's the N64 release. Yeah. And I think these the Blockbuster exclusive thing, that started happening when they were kind of going out the door, and it was like their last ditch effort to like, oh, oh yeah. come on, we've got all the exclusives. you got to come to Blockbuster. Kind of like the GameStop exclusives that are happening right now. Yeah, ooh, right? it's the, it's the death of the it's, South. Yeah. <laughs> it's the witching hour. <laughs> What was that game they made? Song of the South. I don't know. Some some game where you're like underwater. Yeah. Looked all right. Sweet potato pie, and I shut my mouth. Right. Okay. Um, but this game, uh, <laughs> Razor, <laughs> Razor Freestyle Extreme Borden Scootin. Yep. Uh, that's that's what it's called. <laughs> it's basically you know if you're familiar with Tony Hawk's games, any skateboarding game, it's pretty much that in a mini size, right? With scooters. With yeah. children and scooters. Yeah, kids. Ch- you children. Play, you can play Chad. And as Annie, yeah, Annie. And I think you unlock you unlock multiple. You unlock kids. friends, your including f- as you s- UFC champion Tony Tito Ortez. Tito, oh my bad, I thought Tony Hawk was Tony. <laughs> Tito, <laughs> Tony Hawk's in this, and you can also no, it's he's not. That's true false like underground border wackiness. <laughs> you get the sock puppet monkey mm-hmm. thing. So, yeah, it's it's one of those games. You're you're doing tricks, and it's it's kind of got a story tacked on. Where oh yeah. These kids, they were abducted by an evil robot and you just have to do tricks and beat the <laughs> bonus levels to free them. <laughs> Scoot for me children. And um <laughs> that's that's the whole thing. You never like see robots, it's all just It's, it's like one <laughs> sentence of text to get <laughs> in, get in a loading screen. Yeah. But it gives you enough context to feel like, hey, I'm on a I'm on a scooter mission. I'm, I'm, doing good. I'm a prisoner of this yeah. evil robot overlord. Yeah. I'm a scoot for my freedom. <laughs> when you un- when you unlock a new kid, it says they can breathe the sweet air of freedom once more. <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. And that's it. And that's the whole. It's just a bite sized game. You know. What might some... say it's a budget game. Yeah. I, I was trying to find out that. how much what this game uh, MSRP for when it came out. I, I couldn't find anything. Probably full price. Besides you think being this is full price? Yeah, boy, howdy. That'd be a that'd be a real bummer. The only <laughs> game to come off of the Nintendo 64 in 2001. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. This game came uh, out of everything, too. It did come out on everything. PlayStation, Game Boy Color, Dreamcast, Game Boy Advance, N64. Yeah. I, f- I figured, I thought I read something about this being like uh, Razor, the scooter company. They made it just so that they could advertise their scooters. They just wanted to s- get some scooters out the door. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Makes sense to me, too. That was prime time for selling those scooters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's probably, I don't know, like, is that company even around anymore? Let's yeah, see. they are. They yeah. are. They make they're electric still... scooters now, too. Yeah, they're still, okay. you can still buy a Razor yeah, scooter, scooter at the store. Yeah, you, you go down to Wally World, you just pick up any Razor old scooter you like right off the wall. This is, uh. I like the ones with skulls on them. Cool. They've got. I went to their website. I like goth scooters. This is the A scooter. Something tells me that that this game was perhaps more expensive than an actual Razor scooter. Oh yeah, that the scooter I just looked at was thirty bucks. So yeah, but back in the day, Razor scooters were like eighty dollars. Really? Oh, were they? Yeah. I guess yes. Yeah, Metal's sp- gone supply, down in price. Supply and demand. It, they were China. expensive. They back got in the cheap day. China steel now. Yeah, it maybe. Took me a while to get one. That was like one of the nicest things I had as a kid. It was my Razor scooter. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. My parents just bought me crap. So yeah, and now you like go to like a house with kids. <laughs> like I'm thinking of those uh, Smiths, and there's just like Razor scooters lying around. In the yeah, <laughs> they're. I'd say they're not a typical family. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. They have. I, a, a I don't know any other families with children. So <laughs> it's kind of funny how the Razor scooters can fold up. I wish that that was a feature in this game. Yeah. Folding up the scooter, yeah. If like in a uh, Tony Hawk's Underground, where you can get off your skateboard, caveman. 
<laughs> yeah, if you could get off your scooter, fold it up, run around. That'd this cool. game, you can uh, you can stab your scooter, put your foot on the ground, and pivot. That's oh yeah, <laughs> you can do that in this game. You cool. can. I like the hand clap trick in this. Yeah, that's game. my favorite. Uh, trick. I I was <laughs> I saw that, that, that in a video, <laughs> and then I'm sure it was on the tricks list, but I I didn't know how to do it. I didn't. Yeah, that <laughs> that's pretty good. That's a good trick. How many points was that not one much. worth? It was like 400. <laughs> There's not much you can do on a scooter. If you yeah. think it's very limiting. You, well, you can like whip it around. You can spin the handlebars. And you can okay. hand clap. Can whip I ask it. an honest question? Is there really that much less you can do with a scooter than you can do with a skateboard? I think yes. In a video game, like specifically. Probably I think not. you can do more yeah. with a scooter, honestly. It's just funny if that we were talking cared. about how you can't do much, but I feel like that wouldn't be a complaint in like a Tony Hawk. It's game. just like people don't care about it or they don't take it seriously because riding a scooter is a lot easier than. Yeah, and there's no flatland tricks you can do on a scooter, so you can't manual in this game. And that's I well, was, I think you could manual on a scooter pretty easily, but in this game, but not in this game. I but was they, wondering if the Tony Hawk that was released before this, because two is probably out they, by a year now. They didn't add manuals until two or three. I think yeah. it was three actually. Can I ask a question? Do these kind of is this a dead genre? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like they like tried the, they tried to put out a new Tony Hawk in the style of the old ones and it bombed. It was well, it was also really it. horrible. Yeah, it was a really bad game. It's funny because I, I think. Oh, go ahead. I still think there's a market for another game like this that's good. Yeah. Like well, th- there's I that whole know. meme about people wanting the next skate yeah, game skate to come four. out. Uh, yeah. Okay. And but who knows if those people are just memeing or if they actually mm-hmm. want it. I think people would buy a, another game like this. Tony Hawk's Pro yeah. Skater 3 is like the best reviewed game of all time. I think yeah. that t- it says something that even though this game was like budget as heck and like sponsored by Razer and not cool, it still feels it's pretty fun. fun. It's a fun game. You're like zooming around <laughs> and doing tricks. Okay, and let's get into the good category. The core mechanics of the game are sound because they're the Tony Hawk mechanics. Yeah, like literally I was playing this and I was like, this is going to be garbage. Yeah. And then I started playing and my like Tony Hawk muscle memory kicked in. And I'm like, okay, I'm pl- this is just like playing Tony Hawk and it's fun. I found myself trying to manual and I was sad. <laughs> I was like, how am I supposed to carry my combo? Yeah, it's hard to get to keep those combos <laughs> going when you can't manual. That, um, I mean that's real life, right? That's why people. That's why skateboarding is in the uh, the extreme Olympics. What is that? What is that called? Special Olympics. <laughs> but scooting's not. Scooting's not because you can't manual. You, you can't keep the tricks tricks going. Yeah. Sorry, I, uh, I fucking derailed. That. No, that's okay. The <laughs> like the, you know, it, it's definitely using a different like, uh, engine than Tony Hawk, but it's pretty much the exact same control scheme Mm -hmm. it's using the grind sessions yeah grind sessions that's the engine it's using so Hmm. which is probably just a tony hawk clone right and it felt like pretty pretty similar i i went and downloaded a tony hawk rom just to like check it out and yeah it's like very what you can't say that you can't say that it's fine (laughs) we all bought this game to play it oh you you got the five thousand dollar version from walmart okay i Um, found a game on the sidewalk and (laughs) and then he ripped it to cd Mm mm-hmm I found mine in a cereal box. I, did, <laughs> I just want to note for Whitney, because I think she's mine listening, that Shaba Games, who made this game, also, Shaba Games. also developed Shrek Super Slam. That's all. Oh, okay. Just for, for the Whitney. Game Boy Advance? Yes, that was one for, of the, for the game good games. <laughs> <laughs> they also ported Tony Hawk's Underground 2 remix to the PSP. Oh, that's cool. And Spider-Man Web of Shadows they did as well. Yeah, that, that was, was their last, that that was was their last game. one, and they went um, defunct. Let's talk about, like, so we know that you know, I think we mostly agree that this game feels very similar to Tony Hawk in a lot of ways, which makes it fun. Yeah. Right? I agree. Um, did you feel there's anything about it that kind of, like, separated it from Tony Hawk? Like, let's talk about that stuff. In terms of good? No. In terms of good. Nothing? I, I think there are a few things. Better than you can, Tony Hawk? You can land tricks backwards, which you I'm pretty sure. But I think you need to do, like, a revert out of it. In Tony Hawk? No. Are you sure you can land tricks backwards? Yeah. Hmm. But there's no animation where you, like... There is some in-the-air, like, body-aiming stuff where, like, if you're vertical... I mean, if you're, like, horizontal to the ground, you can, like, aim your body to land in a ramp properly. All right. I I can compare this to Tony Hawk (laughs) better than anyone else can, and by better, I mean way worse... I have not played, like, any of these skate games. Like, I didn't play them growing up. 
when we played them like on the, your PS2 like the other week, and by the other week I mean like six months ago, yeah. I was terrible at Tony Hawk. Yeah, I ruled. This game is easier to pick up to me than those uh, thought, than those skate games. I think it was more forgiving. I think. Yeah, yeah, land, more forgiving. I think landing tricks in this game is a lot more forgiving than Tony Hawk. And that and that kind of goes with like maybe in Tony Hawk you can land tricks backwards, but in this game it's like the threshold for like when it lets you do that is like very just wide. It's and almost forgiving. more well, kid friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think the whole mechanic in Tony Hawk, which is present here, but like yeah, you're probably right. It's a little more floaty or something. Is that you have to have your board like aimed as you would ride it when you land. You know. Yeah. It's like you don't want to land with your board angled. Yeah, but in this game, yeah, so I guess saying backwards is, like, pretty misleading um, because, like, you know. The board's the same shape. It's the same (laughs) shape, but, like, when you you land backwards on your scooter, they, like, whip it around again, and then you're going, like, forwards again. And it's kind of like a good, like, fluid animation when you do that. Like, it feels pretty good. I like the noise that Chad makes when he bumps walls. Yeah, when you bump into walls. He's like, ah. And then the girl is like, ah, ah. I didn't realize like how young Chad was until I like fell dude, off. Dude, you play as little kids in this game, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you can you can die. Yeah, you, you fall can off you buildings. can fall off the world and die, and yeah. they scream, and that's <laughs> that's pretty good. That's metal. Yeah, because most games don't let you do that. Skyrim doesn't let you do that. Yeah, you can't kill kids in pretty much also, any game. Chad's got a broken wrist that he's scooting on. That's yeah. I don't know. It might just be arm tape. Yeah, it could be. But it, it looked like a cast. Um, and I kind of liked the soundtrack. Let's talk about even the soundtrack, though even though it's like objectively bad. Um, it's <laughs> it's weird because the N sixty four version didn't have the licensed music. Oh, okay. So the other the other uh, versions of the game did. E- this is the part that's confusing to me. Even the Game Boy Color version <laughs> had licensed music that they like composed in 8-bit they just like redid the songs in oh, the 8-bit yeah. so- it's like uh, what sounds. they do for pinball tables yeah um i also play the game boy color version i like uh, <laughs> i like the goofy midi drums in this though yeah like the and soundtrack then, like, in the n64 real version. recorded guitar on top yeah it was all like instrumental um pop yeah, like punkish pop, stuff really i couldn't even find it online <laughs> honestly like it, i was looking for the soundtrack and i just found the licensed stuff mm-hmm. so i understand the nostalgic appeal of the music in the n64 one that's the only one i played Mm -hmm. but it did not add anything to the experience it it sounds really bad it sounds like yeah it sounds like it's just screeching on your ears yeah yeah everything is high end (laughs) i yeah i enjoyed it but it was definitely like pretty yeah crappy (laughs) it was like a knowing enjoyment for me yeah i i wish i could have found it so we could listen to it but do you want to hear a couple of these license tracks sure you can't play more than five seconds. Here we go. So then we'll get pulled this down. This is uh, th- uh, Three Foot by Betray. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. I have a guess. Yes. Only five seconds. Is there another version? Was this in the game? Was there Something an instrumental version of it? Something sounded like this was in the game. Mm-hmm. Maybe they covered it. Uh, okay. That sounds good. One more. You want to hear? Uh, or no? That was okay. So that that was betrayed by Three Foot. I don't know what's the name of the band and what isn't. This is the Sloppy Meat the Eaters. The things that are repeated is probably the band's name. Yeah. So now I see that. Rock Sloppy scoot. Sloppy Meat Eaters. Uh, this is their song, brand new, kind of. These guys were sick. Good palm muting. It's like just it's like all out of tempo. <laughs> for, for those of you in the audience, just imagine yourself scooting through this at a relatively slow pace. Too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I would love to be like tasked with like this is the licensed music and all the other versions of this game. <laughs> Can you please make a MIDI soundtrack for the N64 version? <laughs> Uh, do you want to hear this 8-bit thing from the Game Boy Color? Yeah. Really sure. quick. 
I can't believe someone uploaded this to YouTube. God bless you. But not the S O T four one. This is the Game Boy Color version, not the GBA version. Right. GBA had like full sound in it. Yeah, not, qu- not quite. Not quite. Not quite. Yeah, it had like SNES sound. It's like sixteen bit like... sound. Hmm. But yeah, that's that's literally one of the I prefer songs the from Game the Boy Color version. Yeah, me too. That's just one of the sounds from songs from the licensed soundtrack, just like redone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's that's interesting. I I don't know why the N sixty four version didn't have any anything like that. Um, it's good stuff. Just to kind of Whitney uh, says, I gotta play that Shrek game. Uh, just to re- re- just to reiterate, like what's good about this game before we presumably move on. Yeah, um, watching kids die. Sure, <laughs> I think <laughs> screaming. I think death. like because we we've compared it to Tony Hawk's the Tony Hawk games, mm-hmm. but I just want to like kind of expand on that a little bit more about yeah, why I think that they work. Let's do it. I think that like there's something like fundamentally fun, and that a lot of games don't pull off very well is like a continuous stream of like player engaged fun or like yeah. action. And so like for in this game it's just like you like the second you get in your scooter it just starts moving. Like you automatically you have to be like okay, I'm I'll go grind on that thing, right? Or mm-hmm. I'll go jump off that half pipe. Yeah. Right? That's how the Tony Hawk games work too. It's like there's like a real flow to the way that like the levels are. It's just like you're just going around and you're doing stuff. There's not like ever a moment of downtime or anything that's like if there's something annoying you can just go do something else right Mm -hmm. and so i think that 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 kind of like free state that the players like put into right away that's like what leads to like that enjoyable flow that i think that these kind of games are able to do quite well which i mean to be frank a lot of games don't do that very well um, at all so like i mean here's looking at you uh what was that dragon game we played Rain of Fire. Rain of Fire. Yeah, that game had like one or two good moments, but it was like drowned yeah. out by all the bad things in between, right? And this, Any, this yeah. game at least has some like a flow, you know? Yeah, it has, you know, it has the same combo system. It has the grinding where you kind of warp to the rail and it feels really good. I don't... Do you have to hold the grind button in this game? I don't think so. I can I, never I, figure out how to hold on to it, so what I would do is I would just jump, keep jumping on the rail so that it wouldn't yeah. fall off. I was trying to think today about how I made myself manual in the Tony Hawk games and like like whether I use the D-pad or the analog stick, you know. And I think that those games are such like muscle memory for me that I can't even think of how I control them. Hmm. So I don't know how to answer your question. Okay. <laughs> um whatever I was doing worked. Well, I know in Tony Hawk, I you don't I'm pretty sure you don't hold the grind button in Tony Hawk, and I think in this one I think you did have to. Unless I, don't, I don't think you did. Hmm. It seemed to me like when I didn't hold it, they were just like stop grinding. Maybe holding but it maybe, helped. Maybe with there the was control. some. Maybe there was something else that was happening that I just wasn't aware of. There are no lip tricks in this, right? There are lip tricks. Yeah. Where you just sit there. Yep. Hmm. I didn't do any. Yeah. I got one where like I must have like like they put up the scooter in the air, and I was like, this is unrealistic. <laughs> uh, I thought the I must have hit the rail wrong like every time. I think. Um, Animating scooter tricks might actually take more work than animating skateboard tricks. Maybe it's a horse apiece, but like a scooter is like a bigger object, and there's kind of like more going on with it, right? Like you can swing the bottom part around. Yeah. Um, and I actually thought like the tricks in this game were very well animated. Yeah, they were. Yes. Like I thought they looked pretty pretty cool. Probably the thing in this game that looks like it, they put the most effort into that yeah. particular thing. And. The aesthetic of the game was very like childish and kind of like simple flat colors and I actually kind of liked that like it made it really easy to tell what was going on and mm-hmm. just made it feel kind of like smooth and I don't know. Yeah, kind of rarely did you get that feeling of like what can I grind off of or anything like that. Yeah. You could just kind of tell this was aimed for a younger audience. Even right. Like the cover has a little kid on it. You're playing yeah. little kids. Mm-hmm. There's no blood. No There's like school themed levels, like school's out. Yeah. It's like the Crash safest the bus. of the punk <laughs> yeah. rock licensed music that yeah. you can get. Yeah. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing if it's for kids, you know. Sometimes that's fun. The best game of all time is Super Mario sixty four and that is for kids. Is it? Every video game is for kids. 
especially leisure, man hunt. leisure suit Larry. Leisure suit Larry. <laughs> Dead or alive. Dead or alive six. Definitely. Manhunt. <laughs> man I already said manhunt, Alec. Oh, I didn't hear that. <laughs> I didn't hear that either. <laughs> Me either. Play back the recording. No. <laughs> we um. didn't hear it. All right. I'm just going to say we a medium to... thing. Okay. I don't know how much credit to give this game for it being fun to play since it came out after Tony Hawk and kind of just that's, did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's kind of the whole thing of it. Yeah. No, but I agree. It's like basically, like, I don't really feel like there's that much originality in this game from Tony Hawk, yeah. especially if the other versions have licensed music and stuff. To me, that was like the only thing that really set it apart, like tonally, was the weird uh, MIDI drums with guitar recording. Like, yeah. But otherwise, it yeah. kind of just felt really like I, I think this yeah. exact same formula just slap a scooter. On yeah, yeah. Or even like collecting things in the environment and completing goals per level, mm-hmm. like you did in uh, Tony Hawk One, Two, mm-hmm. and Three, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, um, you know, to some people, this is probably a criticism, but like the gameplay and like landing tricks and stuff it it just all felt a little more watered down like it was a little easier Mm -hmm. and i think you know to me that kind of counts for something like if you want kind of a different experience from tony hawk where it's just like really freaking easy to land tricks all the time and like do your combos and stuff you know that's kind of fun too right sure so I think uh, I think there's something to that. Yeah, that's not fun. You have to be a pro gamer to play Tony Hawk well, and I am. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, I from playing Tony Hawk One, uh, alongside this game when I was taking my notes and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think Tony Hawk is a little bit slower than this, just a little bit. Yeah, I would agree. Like the early Tony Hawks. Um, so it's like yeah. a little. It's a little faster. It's a little easier. Easier to land tricks. Uh, it's very simple, like aesthetic and art style. And, you know, that's kind of fun. I like it's that fun. you can see the Razor logo on your scooter. Well, you got to see the Razor logo. That's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> it's like the only thing that has any detail on it is that Razor logo. <laughs> yeah. It's like there were, there were like one rule. They got to be able to see that yeah. logo. Yeah. <laughs> Going from this game to Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk has like so much more detail in the environments. It's, mm-hmm. kind, of, it's kind of insane. This game is just like so flat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I would say like going along with what you were saying, Aiden, before about like this doesn't do any really improve upon the formula at all. I completely agree. I kind of was more interested. I, d- I do too. I was more interested in like Excuse detailing me. these like good things that it's just aping off of the other thing because yeah. we just haven't played a game like this before. And we might not ever yeah. play a game like this again. So no, next week we're gonna play uh, Dave Mira <laughs> Pro Wakeboard. Yeah. We're gonna play BM Triple X. I have a <laughs> I have a really hard time like critiquing this game or like feeling passionately about it because of that reason you know like like it wasn't offensive to me it was just yeah. like i played it was like hey this is pretty fun it's like tony hawk i'd rather play tony hawk but yeah. like it's not like i hated this game because it's not tony hawk i wouldn't and say i liked when the kid died yeah, I, when the I kids die that's hilarious saying anything bad about it yeah, i got some too. i got some big boy bad things to say about i mean i got game. a couple things but it's like kind of I it's, just can't even think of anything. So oh, I'd be I, there interested is, to hear. Is there's this another one, one of your zero out of zero games? <laughs> it might, it might <laughs> no, be. Don't. You can only have one of Wait, those. Wait, what was the last one? No, I, I can have as many as I know. It was, one was the last fire. game Alec picked. Rain You're going to give the last two games he picked <laughs> both zero out of he zeros. He just keeps picking void games. <laughs> I'm sick of these bad games. In the, I in need the, to find another Blockbuster exclusive. <laughs> in the license and agreement that you signed for Pixel Report, you gave away your yeah. one and only, only zero, single zero. zero. You only zero. get one of those. Um, What's your bad stuff? I Let's actually have it. like a very uh, stern criticism of Uh-oh. this game. Let's, Let's hear it. Kids, stern time. Do you want to hear it? Don't be mean to the kids. Uh, the first three levels are fun and like Tony Hawk. The Sky Fortress levels are trash. <laughs> okay, and I didn't it's, play those. There are, there are eight levels... The first three are good. Yeah. The last five are these Sky Fortress levels that are awful. Where I played you, the first three. <laughs> yeah, so you play the first three. The first three, you um, you progress through like getting points, right? Yeah. So you get a certain amount of points, you get to the next level. The Sky Fortress levels, you need to get all the wheels in the level, which is not fun. And the time limits are generally around a minute. You have much shorter time limits. So you have a minute to get all the wheels in the level. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard and not fun. And does not like Tony Hawk. And doesn't fit the ethos of the game. Uh, you you have to do that in the earlier ones if you're trying to five star them or whatever. Right. So if you yeah. want to five star them, you have to get all the wheels and all the you know but all the, the f- bonus so objectives. Yeah, in the future levels, you have to do it. Yeah. To pass. Yeah. So it's like in Tony Hawk when you gotta get all the letters to spell skate. Mm-hmm. Right. You're like trying to find them in the environment and 
jump on him to get him. The thing, so there is an interesting. I don't remember if this is in the original Tony Hawks that are more like time based, but if you hit a certain like combo, you add to your timer. So maybe you can do that in this game too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, yeah you can do that here. I think that by doing that, they're expecting you to combine your ability to do tricks and navigate the environment at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By making that required. Um, All right. Hold, uh, hold off on one of your criticisms. Out. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, I, <laughs> I just have say, so many. Oh. I don't want to like lay them all out at once. Yeah, I have a few criticisms. I was gonna say one. Another way this game simplifies things is like the characters. There's no stats, and I know in like Tony Hawk oh, games yeah. that there's like a pretty big part of it. And so like you can unlock a character. Like I unlock Devin or some somebody. <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of kids in this game. Token, <laughs> token '90s kids yeah. name. And I, I locked him in. It's just like. There's nothing different about the kid. It's yeah, little, they just looks look, they look a little different. And you go through the same exact thing to unlock the next kid, and nothing nothing changes. Like <laughs> the points get a little higher, collect a little bit more coins, but yeah, you can change the color of your scooter. Oh yeah, that's, that's really nice. That's the only customization option. Yeah, that's cool. Tony Hawk, you could change your uh, your wheel your wheels and your board. Give yourself an afro. Yeah. <laughs> Does it create a character option? Was that in Underground or in Three? I think that started in four. Okay. You might have started in three. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, so, like, one of my complaints about this game is, like, I really despise the camera <laughs> and the way that, like, it moves when you move. It's super jerky. And, it, and it, like, I can only play, like, 35 minutes of this until, like, my head was, like, splitting. Like, huh. I had to stop playing mm. because of, like... It's, like, in combination of, like, the very bright graphics as well as, like, the, like, if I just press the thing, like, the whole screen, like, jerks in a direction, and it's not fluid or smooth at all. And that really detracted from my personal experience of this game Mm -hmm. because, like, I can't stare at that for very long. I know know not everyone experiences that, but I think that's poor game design of, like, Mm -hmm. having, like, no ability to control the camera, and then whenever you try to move, like, everything just is, like, shifting really jerkily around. Like, that's, the Tony Hawk games are better to, at it than that they still had the same thing though they had the same general thing but they don't feel as jerky when you're trying to like turn and stuff yeah and speaking i'm just gonna keep going for one more complaint (laughs) this i don't you get all right maybe it's faster than the tony hawk games and maybe these just aren't games that i like but i felt slow as heck when i was going around on my scooter gotta you gotta put those bearings you gotta hold the uh I, the ollie button down yeah i learned that like <laughs> holding it down made me go faster but even so i still felt really slow oh let me tell you about like with the camera <laughs> i want to tell you like one of the i got into like the pool in like the second level uh-huh. and like i was going up and down like the sides and that was like like that was like, gr- like go try to just go between like the two sides of that pool and tell me that it doesn't make you like want to throw up because like it just like the way that everything is like spinning mm-hmm. is just, was... i was throwing up the whole time <laughs> yeah i was throwing that's up just, too i thought it was good that's but part so, of playing these games to read it on the speed thing i felt really slow while playing the game and like it took me like it, the, it's like that there's like this disconnect between like this idea of the game which is like wanting to like be jumping mm-hmm. around all the time and doing stuff and for me sometimes it'd be like i gotta go get those wheels over there i'm yeah, scooting I over there that's a hard like, i think that's just a hard thing to balance because if they make you too fast then it's like it just probably make control. it impossible i just thought, i wish that why didn't when you like okay so like the a and b buttons were unassigned for this title right yeah so why not have like the a button be like kicking the ground like you know what i mean like that's a really simple thing to do it's like you speed up when you press a because you're like you're kicking right that's exactly how a scooter works but there was no way to like feel like you were the character like kicking the ground and like scooting up they had to work within the confines of the grind session engine <laughs> They're not going to do well, any extra work. I think it's just you're automatically going up to top speed all the time. I, I don't know. I yeah. think yeah. that's just how it is. I agree, though. The top speed was pretty slow. and like It was slow, but like I said, it still felt yeah. a little faster than the original yeah. Tony Hawk. So. It, it was just weird, though. Like you, I never felt like I could get momentum like off of the ramps or when I was grinding. Like in yeah. the Tony Hawk games, it felt yeah. like that was one thing that was... Or the momentum well. felt like really... Like, sometimes I'd pick up momentum, but it would be, like, incongruous with, like, what was going, what I felt was going on. Like, I'd get done with the grind, and I'd hit the ground, and I'd, like, zoom! Like, I'm like what the heck just happened? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like. Uh, What's something you didn't like, John? Holding the grind button, even though I don't think that was. <laughs> what I didn't like was I always bind the C buttons to the right joystick, and then I learned that 
all of the tricks in this game are bound to the C buttons. Mm -hmm. So I was like trying to play with the joystick, and I was like, "This is terrible." And then I had to change. I actually, change didn't controls. mind playing with the joystick, but that's neither here nor there. I don't. Um, I I mean, you know, like other than the fact that the Sky Fortress level sucked and it's a Tony Hawk ripoff, I really don't have anything bad to say about it. Like, I guess a lack of content. Only eight levels, and there you get through them pretty quick. Bad value proposition. Definitely a bad value proposition on this blockbuster exclusive. Alec, what about you? You had anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, no, not really. My main complaint is not even like it's not really a bad thing. It's just what John said is how there's just a it's really short lack of content. There's mm -hmm. not much replayability. Like in the Tony Hawk games, there's different games and stuff you can play. Yeah, it's pretty Horns. easy to get full completion on the levels. Yeah. yeah. So this game is like it's over and like it's one that's like obviously it's going to be over in about an hour of playtime or something. Yeah. Uh, I so someone wants to hear about the Game Boy Color version. Uh, right? Do you guys want to hear about it? Uh, yeah. I have one major <laughs> critique left. Why don't you go ahead and okay. do that first? Well, no. Do your do your critique first. Okay. <laughs> Before we talk about a completely different version, I of the thought game. we'd like do that, come back to it, then review. Like, I thought that makes sense nah. to me. Nah, just do your okay. thing. Okay. I'm just going to be honest. And I know that this is more on me as a player than it necessarily is on the style game. But this style of game is just so uninspiring and dull to me. What like, style of Eric? game? Like, what the, style the, of the, the pro Hold skater your game. Tongue. So it's like. You just, said okay. they, you just said that they were great because. They're no, always no, no, no. doing I, I, fun. I can evaluate. I hate and, you, Eric. I can evaluate and say, like, this is something about this game that I like. You know what I mean? But then I can come back and say something like, I think player choice in these games, to me, is just absolutely meaningless. Like, you play the game, you go up, you do a cool trick, and the only thing that's different is, like, the amount of points you get and the animation. And there's no, like, it's just, like, it's it feels vapid when I'm playing it. Like, and I'm not trying to be, like, like, I'm not trying to be like, yeah, I'm so smart and, like, I play smart games because, like, I like fucking Mr. Mosquito, right? But, I feel like, like the Tony Hawk games are, like, so arcadey that I can't even believe you're saying this. So, but you like arcade I do games. like arcadey games. They're, like, very, like, skill based games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm not know. saying it isn't skill based. And I'm not saying, like, when I say vapid, I mean, like, for me as a player, I go up, I do a trick, I go up, I do a different trick. I don't really feel like there's a meaningful difference between the two things I did. So, like, my well, choices don't really – they don't feel like they matter when I'm playing this kind of game. It's like I'm like, okay, right, I'm going to go up that half pipe. I'm going to do a trick. I'm going to come back down. I'll grind on that thing. And I know that I have options for, like, what I'm going to do. But mm -hmm. for me personally as a player, it feels like there's – like, as long as I'm landing the trip tricks, like, there's no difference between the choices that I had, had available. Well, I, I, I don't know. I disagree. I just think it's kind of a misrepresentation. Like, I think the games are about, like – hitting goals and the goals in this uh -huh. game are like very easy but like trying to like throw together huge combos to get enough points mm -hmm. in a tony hawk to like progress to the next level or whatever yeah. that stuff is like really fun and no, it's no, like no. and you and it's it, much better executed in those games than yeah. this one and this one i felt particularly it was acute that yeah. feeling of like but it does not matter what i choose to do when I, i'm in i just think or it's like that goal oriented system mixed together with like just a fantastic control scheme that like feels great and it's like you like think I have this game had a fantastic control scheme that felt great. It's I'm like just, I'm it was, just asking. It's the same as Tony Hawk, so okay. yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, and I think Tony Hawk is probably better in some ways, but um, that's like the way Tony Hawk controls is like I haven't, you know, I've played a decent amount of them when I was growing up, and then I've kind of like revisited them over the years, mm -hmm. and it's like it's a control scheme that's so good that it just like sticks with me my whole life like it's yeah. like riding a bike like going back no. to a tony hawk game is like getting think, back on the bike yeah, i'm not you know? saying it's a I bad control the scheme choice mm -hmm. of but i'm just saying like why i think these games these types of games are great oh yeah to yeah. like re to okay. rebut your point okay okay yeah i think that the moves you choose in the air have to do with like uh timing more than anything yeah uh so you'll obviously get more points if you can time like a grab trick into a flip trick before you hit the ground in a single jump yeah, and so like some of the grab tricks take longer animations, and some of them don't, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. No, that makes sense. Yeah, and like these aren't new feelings I got from the razor thing. It's like I had 
uh, like my my little brother's best friend, who we hung out at his house a lot when we were at my dad's. Mm-hmm. He had he loved these kind of games. Yeah, like he had like all the BMX titles and all the Tony Hawk games. And I'll just say like, even as a kid, I just did not find these games very enjoyable. Like mm-hmm. I like like in this one, I was like for the first fifteen minutes, I was like this is fun, and then like the next like twenty thirty minutes I played, I was just, like, this isn't. I'm not really getting anything out of this. Like so to me, it's like a fun little experimental thing that I, you do for a little bit but it's something that to me has very little replay value like very little there's very little that makes me want to come back to it, this style of game even yeah. though i think that fundamentally they're fun and easy to play mm-hmm. and i like and like i like the game state that like it promotes and like it's like a like the flow like i was describing yeah but i just wish there was like more underneath for me to like grab onto and like that would keep me coming back yeah Okay. Uh, Game Boy Color. Here's your re- here's your pixel report on the Game Boy Color version of Razor Freestyle Scooter. Uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> Does it control like this? Is no, it's, it's completely like it's, it's completely different. It is isometric, um, and you're not even. It's like a racing game. <laughs> it's like completely different. You're like racing scooters down the street. And all the kids are wearing helmets, and they're like obstacles in the road and on the sidewalk and stuff that you have to jump over. And um, you can roll up on the sidewalk and run into joggers. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it had that eight-bit pop punk soundtrack. That's it. Yeah, like like I'd like <laughs> it if this game had a racing mode where like it maybe should have had more modes. Yeah, or like something. Or, like maybe so. This is more a critique of the game, the, this specific game. But it's not like. To me, like the levels have no meaningful difference between them. You know what I mean? Other than like the the way. Yeah, not like, really. You know. That's another thing about Tony Hawk is the levels are like way better. Yeah, there's like cool secrets to find and stuff. I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> just play Tony Hawk. Don't, yeah, don't yeah. Pick up you don't need to play this. Time. You don't need to spend five thousand dollars. No, definitely, <laughs> definitely don't spend five thousand dollars on Razor Freestyle Scooter. Um. All right, well, let's hit the uh, let's hit it with some review scores. Who's ready to review the game with the score? Alec, you ready? Oh, uh, should I tell you? About Adder, do you have any? Did you pull any reviews that yeah, you want to talk about? Jeff Gershman reviewed this oh, game in 2006, Our so favorite. few years after it came out. But he uh, he gave it a 6.6 .6 out of 10. Okay, and he said it's um, a, he's like albeit a short game <laughs> i don't know, I remember the exact quote i gotta uh, get that okay. he basically said like um it was it was a pretty good um, i gotta look up the thing here i got just, it i got yeah, it yeah i was surprised you just didn't have it up on your phone <laughs> well it's such a short little thing i thought i would it was like three it. paragraphs but uh i got it here 6.6 yeah. 6 out of 10 um was this just published on gamespot.com in he, 2006 he, wrote, he probably reviewed it he wrote it a out. lot of like user reviews as a user review on GameSpot. Oh, okay. I think that's might be what this is. Okay. Um, but he says, while the game is aimed at a younger crowd, it still manages to be good, albeit short-term fun. And seasoned fans of the genre will, will whip through the game. Oop, got a pop-up. In an afternoon, no questions asked. It doesn't offer any real variety in its challenges, but the game is a fun day version, and it's worth a rental. And younger players who haven't already become accustomed to Tony Hawk methods will likely get a lot more out of the game. Yeah, that last sentence is what I I found the redeeming quality in this game is like it's for kids, and by kids for, for kids. kids. No, I don't think kids made this. <laughs> no, maybe they did. Oh yeah, we're all <laughs> well, well. Okay, but um, <laughs> so with that logic, I give this game a three out of five. Like me personally, it is like it's like I don't know. It's so hard. Like Aiden was saying, it's just like oh, it's it's a game. It's one of these games, and it's, there's kids in it, and it's a good kid game. Three out of five. It's good for kids. Three like out of five. Kid stuff. I like kid stuff. It's good for kids. <laughs> three out of five. Is this like a Mystic Heroes three out of five, Alec? No, not even. <laughs> Mystic Heroes is five out of five. <laughs> I did not game. give Mystic Heroes a five out of five. Did you? I don't remember. I give this game, <laughs> Razor Scooter Freestyle Super Shirt, a 2 out of 5. It's fine. I don't care. It's like <laughs> I'd rather play Tony Hawk. little perturbed that they just ripped off Tony Hawk, but I guess I'm glad that some people probably played this and then got into Tony Hawk. Uh, Tony Hawk was making big bucks back then. Yeah. 
Razor wanted in on the action. They made a new Tony Hawk mobile game. Yep. So, yeah, two out of five. I um, like kid death, like child slaying in games. That's pretty good. Yeah. I, I totally get the criticism, that, and I agree with the criticism, that this is just a Tony Hawk ripoff. Um, but even on that basis, I still had a lot more fun with it than I do with a lot of the games that we played. Mm-hmm. So just based on that, I'd still give this, like, uh, ooh, you know what I'm going to give it, 6.9 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, why not 420, dude? Dude, 4.2. Nah. Um, yeah, I give it a 6.9. It's fun. It's, uh, like you know, like Jeff said, a fun little diversion. Simple. Turn your brain simple off to play. For a while. Simple to understand. Yeah. Simple graphics. And we'll completely forget we ever played it by tonight. Tonight. <laughs> yeah. I will. Turn your brain off and this, scoot around. This game won't be on any of our end of your lists. <laughs> John, you, ha- you have a good it podcast voice. It's a void voice. game. I do? Oh, yeah. thanks. You just sound good. Thank you very much. Um, wow, what about me? <laughs> you have no. You have a good voice. I, you. You have a, nice. I, have, no I think I have the worst voice. podcast voice because I got kind of like a tinny voice. But anyways. Uh, you have any, a nice, any, wet, any, booming voice, Aiden. Any, yeah, <gasps> Aiden, I like, I like your voice too. Um, uh, for me, so like kind of talking about the complaints um, that I had, I already reiterated them, so I don't really need to say them again. But – like I, I just not a lot of replay value here. Um, it kind of grew old pretty fast for me. But like I said, it's not really my style of game, or at least I've never particularly got engaged with this genre. Um, that said, I think the it, but it's for kids argument is bullshit. Pokemon's for kids, and that's cool and deep. And so like I don't know I, how deep it is. Ouch. It's it's <laughs> deep enough that people have competitions. I'm just saying like you can have like a game that's for kids and still like have deeper mechanics than what this thing offers right and so i i just wish it seems like they like really wanted to promote the brand the scooter brand so i will give it two of those uh like little rubber things are like the styrofoam the grips out of five two grips per scooter two grips per scooter two script two grip two scores per game (laughs) sick scoot it up dude that's the scooter game. But Alec, I would like to thank you for picking it because it was a unique experience. Yeah, it was fun. You're welcome. Uh, I <laughs> don't pick this game again. I'm going to yeah, pick please, it again. Please in don't. Four weeks. Please don't pick the same don't game twice. Don't repeat this game. I'm going to pick the GBA version. There are a lot of games that we can play. <laughs> we don't need to play two Fraser um, games. Do you guys want to do some news real quick? Then yeah, the, DOA 2. Get the hell out of here. Uh, I have here a Dreamcast magazine. I think it's just called Dreamcast. Dreamcast, Dreamcast U- Express. Dreamcast. The Dreamcast magazine. <laughs> Dreamcast is a great name for a console. Um, like, this game, you know, the, yes. the scooter game came out on Dreamcast, so that's not the version we played, but whatever. And this one's from 2000, which is not the <laughs> the year that the game we played came out, but whatever. It's close enough. Um, it's around the same time. So we got some news from around that time, and this news bit says, Sonic on Xbox? <laughs> Rumors that a relationship is blossoming between Sega and Microsoft. Uh, Sega looks to break the taboo of traditional format exclusivity, and Microsoft's machine looks like a firm favorite. So they knew, about the, they knew about the knew about the Xbox <laughs> back in this is December two thousand. Yeah, I guess they they would have known about the Xbox in December two thousand. Um, you know that with Microsoft's financial muscle and Sega's unparalleled expertise in video games, this could be the future. <laughs> the the future of video gaming. I can't believe. That. Well, I guess it's a Dreamcast yeah, magazine. Dream. I was going to say like no one I, would ever say toward, that. This is like this has got to be towards the end of the Dreamcast. Yeah, like this Dreamcast is kinda, dies in like o two or o three. Yeah. No, it's, I think it was earlier than that. It was like 2001, I think. It died with the PS2. With the PS2. But, right. like, you didn't the PS2 know... PS2 came out in 2000. It, did it? I thought yeah. it was 2001. We played PS2 games from 2000. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, the PS2 Slim came out like The final issue of Dreamcast Magazine was April 2001. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, like, three or four you're issues right. The Dreamcast before. came out in 99. Because it, it came out a year before yeah. the PS2. Yeah. 
And that's why you got this, this weird, like like this kind of game, where it's crossover between the N64, PlayStation, and Dreamcast. It's like those are different generations. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Oh, here we go. Dream Creator. What could this be? Uh, Set- Media Molecules, new game for the It's PS4. actually, I picked this because it's a lot... Uh, a lot like that. Uh, Sega is releasing a 3D adventure creation program called Dream Studio in Japan. And it, it will enable gamers to create their own adventure games filled with their own characters, stories, dialogue, monsters, environments, music, and sound. There's a large resource database included in the program. So if you... Is that like RPG wanna, Maker? Yeah, basically. This RPG. game creation program... Uh, looks so good that we reckon Sega should put it out over here in the UK. This is a UK magazine. Did I mention that? Okay. No, you didn't. Well, it is. I love how you can like <laughs> see where no. like You should the, have been reading it differently then. I love how like we can take the the two news bites that you just gave and how like those are still like relevant thematically in gaming in 2019. Like in terms of oh. exclusives, yeah. like the Halo games are going are possibly coming to the Switch, which would be like a big leap for like a first first party titles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for that second thing, you've got that thing for the PlayStation. Are, who's developing that? Is that Media the, Molecule? Well, that, they that thing that they keep talking about in Giant Bomb that I can't the, remember the, the Dreams name game. Of. Yeah, yeah, the Dreams yeah. game, which is like a lot like that. Yeah. I mean, like different in terms of like it's still people making their own games within mm-hmm. another game. Yeah. So. Uh, also, Sonic is relevant because it's Sonic. He's yeah. Sonic. He's always relevant. There's He's nothing, ugly. nothing weird going on with Sonic right now. He's totally He's normal, normal and guy. totally normal, normal and cool. not weird. He's and a ugly. video game character. No Sonic. Sonic was not in the news at all this week. No, no. It's just totally was it uh, like number two trending worldwide. <laughs> probably. People care more about Sonic than the internment of the Uyghur people in China. That's definitely true. People care more about a lot of things than a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was more sorry. That was a cynical thing for me to say. I didn't. Okay. What it. do people care more about, Sonic or Game of Thrones? What's more important? What's, What's the more, more important, important issue? <laughs> Sonic. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> really? Okay. All right. Game of Thrones is is a flicking as dust in the wind. It's from tw- that's like 2010 to 2019. Then it's done. No one's gonna I, care about Game of Thrones in three years. I know Sonic people. Sonic is ever long. Sonic is ever long. I know people like Sonic, but I was floored when I saw that the Twitter account has 5.8 million followers. People love Sonic. It's like Sonic is like the genesis for like furry culture. And that Twitter account is bad. It's like really bad, like memes and stuff. It's like the Wendy's account. It's a lot like that kind of thing. Like it's very like they're posting memes and trying like, to be funny. I'm a human yeah. like you guys. But it's like really super like corporatized and just like total garbage. I say the um, Wendy's one is like a little less corporatized, even though Wendy's is a big corporation. Like the Wendy's one will just like it, there's some funny stuff on there. Yeah, it says like bullshit all the time. Uh do you guys wanna get a some Dreamcast peripherals? Do you want to get a Dreamcast mouse, a mouse for your Dreamcast? Yeah. It's eighteen dollars. Do you think anyone's ever played Apex Legends on that mouse? No. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think this is a USB mouse. I don't know how, how you'd even hook this up. I so want to hooks up with a coaxial cable. Do you want a Dreamcast <laughs> microphone? Do you guys ever see those videos online of like people like playing like I play Overwatch with a squirt gun? Like yeah, I beat Dark Souls with a racing that's wheel. Weird. Yeah. Um. Hold on. Hold up. You have one more news. There, there is a news letter in here. It's four thirty, John. All right, we should just go. Right? Should we just go? Yeah. Uh, I wanted one let's, more piece of news. Let's go scoot just Whatever's on that page. I don't page. know where it is. Whatever's on this page. This is the Ferrari 355 Challenge Player's Guide. This is what was in the Dreamcast <laughs> magazine. Oh, Q&A. Ooh. Um, Ask us a question. These are all stupid. Just just, just pick one at random. This if guy, Sonic and Tails are friends, why wasn't Tails in Sonic 1? <laughs> uh, could you? Okay, here we go. Here's a good Q&A. Could you tell me if there's any music from Dreamcast games on CD tape, such as Soul Calibur? Couldn't you put Dreamcast <laughs> discs in a CD li- player? What's the, what was this guy's name, Christopher? Couldn't Chris- you do that? Christopher. Guys? Christopher, learn how to write a sentence. Jesus. I, I thought you could do that, where you can put a Dreamcast disc in a CD player and it works. I think that was I Xbox. Know, uh, or maybe it's- An- Anon, Anonymous via email wants to know, is Ready to Rumble compatible with the Vibration Pack? So that's what Anonymous was doing before, like, threatening Scientology yeah. and stuff? Uh, and it is compatible. <laughs> oh, that's nice that's, that's the answer. That's really good information <laughs> to have. It's a Dreamcast magazine. you got to know about your Dreamcast stuff. Uh, all right. We think, love you guys. we're good. I think we're good to go. Uh, check us out at facebook.com slash thepixelreport to stay updated on the latest Pixel Report news.
You can also follow us on Instagram. Just type the Pix Report into your search bar. On Hashtag Instagram. video game lives matter. Yeah. Play us out with some of that Game Boy Advance music. Hashtag Gamergate. Um, don't Game hold on. Up. I'll do the 8-bit. How about that? Yeah. Hashtag joyous um, gamer justice. Sweet. Yeah, we'll be back next week with, some number, with uh, more games. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks, everyone else, for being here. Bye.